In the early 12th century, masers uh, were created because at that time the population of Scotland was increasing and the then monarch was the only person who could dispense justice in the land. So what happened was that he created the position of jesters who were sent out into Scotland, north, south, east and west, to do uh, all the complaints that the public had at that time and the population um, complaining about. However, not a lot of these decisions were popular as they are today, and as they were going around, they were likely to be attacked by people who were uh, not happy with the decisions that these judges had given. So to protect the justice as they went about, the position of Maser was created. In actual fact, all the Maser was was a bodyguard, and he carried, a, as in Knights of Armour, uh, a steel mace. However, that has developed now into a symbol of the Crown's authority and is carried before a judge in the High Court of Justiciary and the Court of Session in Edinburgh. The first mace we have here is a gold mace. It is the mace for the Lord President of the Court of Session, which was made in London in 1667. It weighs 17 and a half pounds. It's made of silver and it has 22 karat gold gilded onto it. This mace was at first thought to be the Great Mace of Scotland, and in fact it's not. When we had our own government before, this mace was used by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, because there was an Exchequer Bank within uh, the Supreme Court's building at Parliament Square. And it was gifted to the Lord President of the Court of Session to be used exclusively in the First Division Court, Court? and uh, the mace has to be carried by a macer with gloves on for fear of taking the, the gilding off the shaft. It's also used every year for the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland and it's carried before the commissioner to that assembly each year by a macer from the courts. Stuart Mace, which was presented to the courts in 1633, is used daily. And this mace is used exclusively for jury trials within Parliament House and serves no other purpose. The next mace is Charles II also, and this mace was handed over in 1659 and it plays its part in the court by being used in one of the divisions of the court of session each day in Parliament House. The next mace is the Queen Anne mace which was made in 1704 and it is used for an extra division of the court of session in Parliament House. The next one is the George II mace which was made in 1760, and again is used each day in the Court of Session. This one here is donated by George III in 1815, and again is used each day in the Second Division Court by the Lord Justice Clark. It was decided that there would be maces made for circuit courts, and this was the result which I'm quite sure you can see is not up to scratch with the silver maces and jokingly referred to as baked bean tins by the macers. A mace has to be present in the High Court of Justiciary on all occasions. The courts are not properly constituted unless there is actually a mace behind the judge on the bench. The main duty of a macer is to escort the judge to and from the court and to ensure the judge is not hampered or molested. Court. The macer brings the witnesses into court Mr. Trotter, will you take the oath, Mr. Trotter? 
Vater, und ich habe gleich gefragt, I swear by a mighty God, I swear by a mighty God, that I will tell the truth, that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. and looks after the productions and labels in court, as well as assisting the clerks with documents and books for the judge. The mason is also responsible for calling the cases. This an imaginary scene in a painting by Hardy of the Parliament Hall in 1893 shows a mason calling a case. The window is still there today, but the mason now calls the case from under the great window and uses a public address system. This mace is the Elizabeth uh, mace, uh, named after Her Majesty the Queen. The idea behind this was that no maces like this had been made and donated to the courts in the last 200 years, and it was suggested that we might be allowed to have a mace made and desi designed in Edinburgh more to a Scottish theme rather than the maces you see here, here, which all have an English um, idea behind them as far as the crowns are concerned. So what happened was that uh, Mrs. Hamilton Inches came up with a design for this mace, which has various uh, ideas of Scotland about it. One of the first problems we had was that we cannot put E2R on anything up in Scotland because we've never had an E1R. So what, was, what happened was a, uh, a design was brought up and submitted to Buckingham Palace for Her, Her Majesty's approval, and of course it came back that uh, she did approve. Over the years, Hamilton Inches has been privileged to look after, restore, repair, uh, the wonderful collection of maces that uh, the Scottish legal services use. And there is a great tradition there of them being commissioned by the monarch. And it became apparent uh, to Jim Stewart, the rover, that there was a gap in the number of maces that the court had, and in particular one for the Lord Justice General. And so he came up with the idea in 2005 uh, that the court could commission a mace to celebrate Her Majesty's 80th birthday, uh, which she could then present back to the Lord Justice General to follow the tradition of earlier maces. It involved all the skills of all the craftsmen that we have available. Uh, John Hunt, who is the manager of the workshops, was the principal silversmith involved with making it. But the various emblems were chased by Panos Kirkos. Uh, the engraving was completed by Rory Ma Malcolmson. Uh, and Colin Gould have brought the whole thing to life as our polisher. Uh, and so it's a real team effort, and um, it's one of those wonderful jobs which become a part of the history of what we have made and the fabric of Scotland. On the 2nd of July last year, the Queen formally presented this maze to the Court of Session. It was presented to Lord Hamilton, who is the President of the Court of Session, uh, to be used in his Court. courts, in the Criminal Appeal Court, when the Lord Justice General was sitting. On your Lordship's Criminal Appeal Rule, Appeal Number 1, John Smith. If there's a real final thought about making something like this. Just imagine when it's as old as the old maces already are in three or four hundred years. Think of how many judgments this mace will have borne witness to and just how much gossip it's got inside it which it will be itching to tell someone but never will, never will be able to. The idea behind the creation of the mace was to create something that would last for another 400 years, because if these maces could talk, what tales would they tell? And we have no record of how and where they came to, so we have something like this, which in fact is a time capsule, because inside the shaft of this is the story behind 
the mace actually being made. So inside we have a photograph of the Queen presenting the mace, and inside the cap is engraved the names of the silversmiths and the engravers who put this beautiful article together. So I'm hoping that if in 400 years' time it has to be repaired or something like that, when they open it up, as it all unscrews, they'll find the story inside.